Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I am going to be continuing with my Intermediate Python uh, tutorials, and we're going to be moving on to something called Named Tuple, uh, or Tuple, whichever one you prefer, um, which is a part of the Collections data type, or module, class, whatever you want to call it. So in the previous video, I introduced you to kind of to the collections module in Python, and I showed you counter, which is really useful. Um, today I'm going to be showing you named tuple, which is another data type or class, whatever you want to call it, within that module. Um, and pretty much this is the description of it. I'm just going to read it right off of the uh, documentation here because it explains it better than I could come up with. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Named tuples assign meaning to each position in a tuple and allow for more readable self-documenting code. They can be used wherever regular tuples are used and they add the ability to access field by names instead of position index. So you should understand a bit of that, but if you don't, obviously I'm going to go through exactly how this works and how we can use it. So the main difference between a named tuple and a regular tuple is you can access things by element and it's just a lot nicer to read in your program. Uh, so they might come in handy if you're coding large things or if other people are going to be reading your code. So let's go ahead and first off start by importing collections like this. And then we're just going to from collections, we are going to import named tuple. Oops. Okay. So now that we've done that, what we're going to do down here is I'm just going to create something that I'm kind of going to go and show you what exactly this does. So I'm just making a new variable point. I'm going to set it equal to a named tuple with name point. And then it's going to have fields X, Y, and Z. And I'm going to show how this works. Okay, so what I've just done here is I've said point is going to be equal to a new object, which is a named tuple or tuple. Um, the name of the tuple is point, and it has fields X, Y, and Z. Now, this looks a little weird. You might be confused. What we're going to do whenever we want to create a new point that is in the form of this named tuple is we're going to treat this like a class and we're gonna do something like this. We're gonna say new p is equal to point, and then we need to give our uh, parameters, so in this, or arguments, so in this case, an x, y, and z, so I'm just gonna say three, four, five, like so. Now, you might be looking at this to be x, y, z, this is one string, um, this might be the name of one parameter. The way that this works, and it's actually really useful, is that it's automatically gonna break up this string, x, y, z, into three different parameters. So I'm just gonna print this to the screen to kind of show um, what I mean here. So I'm just going to print new P and you can see that we have X equals three, Y equals four and Z equals five. Now what happened here is when we gave an iterable object as our different parameters, you can see that we get, uh, it just breaks it up by space. So I do something like G Y and then I run this here. You can see now G Y is equal to four. I can add another one, um, on the end, like H, uh, Oh, and then we're just missing one argument. So I'd have to add another number in here so that we get h is equal to eight. I can also do the same thing with a list per se. So if I have a list and I want all of these to be the names of the, something like x, y, uh, and let's just do like l. And we run this, takes four, okay, I keep forgetting to fix this. Anyways, uh, you can see we get x, y, l. Any iterable object will work. I'm not exactly sure how a dictionary works, but I'm pretty sure it takes the keys. So let's just go ahead and have a look at this one. We'll just say, x um, 0 y 0 um, z 0 now this might crash but I just want to see if this actually works oh yeah it does work so it just takes the key names ignores the values so we get x y and z and then I guess you can do the same thing with any other iterable object because those are the only ones I can think of that are useful right now so anyways when we want to create a new tuple uh, or a new name tuple what we're gonna do is just say whatever the name of that's going to be is equal to point which we've set up here to be this type um, with these like parameters attributes and then we just give it those parameters now there's a lot of really cool things and methods that go along with this named tuple and that's why it's useful so first of all you can do something like this new p dot x um, new p dot y and new p oops dot z like so and now what this is going to do is it's going to allow us to access each element by its uh, index, so by its name, which you can't do with a regular uh, tuple. So you see we get three, four, five to the screen like that. And we can use the same operations that we use on basic tuples. So I can do something like new p zero like that. Um, and oops, my mod thing just popped up somewhere else. And you can see we get three um, because that's the first one that shows up. 
we can also print this so it looks uh, in the form of a dictionary. So I'm just going to say underscore is dict like this. I believe this is the method, or not is, as, sorry. And when we print this to the screen, you'll see what shows up. And it says an order dictionary, and it gives us a list, and then it gives us the all the uh, tuples within. So x3, y4, z5, um, kind of a different form if you want to play with that and use that. We can also print out all the field names, um, which is useful. Say you forget the fields, you can do new p dot and then fields, and it gives us uh, a tuple with those fields in it. The next method that we can use is the replace method. Um, this one's pretty straightforward, but all you have to do simply is type, I don't know, let's see here, new p dot underscore replace. And just make sure you guys remember to put these underscore here. All the methods pretty well for this uh, require an underscore. Don't ask me why, but that's the way they're written. They need an underscore. And then you're going to put a key name. So say I want to replace y, and I can say equals to six. Uh, so we'll run that. And then if I just go here and just to show you that we did change that, let's print new p like that. And you can see, oh, y did not change to uh, to six. That's weird. Let's, let me just see if I print this to the screen, if this is going to change. It should have worked. New P like so. Let's check. And Y is not changing to four. Um, that's very interesting why that is not working. Okay, so I just had a quick look at the documentation. And the reason why I can't do what I'm trying to do here with this replace uh, is because this replace doesn't actually change the tuple object. It, it's not capable of doing that. So what we have to do is we have to assign a new variable or a new object to that. So pretty much what this does is it returns a new named tuple, uh, which we then can set to, in this case, the same name. It, it's going to do the same thing that we tried to do, except we just need this new P equals to. Hope that makes sense. So now if I run the program, we can see that finally this is working. We are changing X, or I was just trying to change Y before, but I switched it to X to see if there was an issue there. Uh, and you can see that that is working like that. So anyways, um, that is pretty much it. I'll show one last method here if you guys are still watching. So pretty much we can do something like a new, a new point. So we'll say P2 is equal to point dot underscore make. And then I'm just going to put a little list in here. I'll just say like A, B, C. Now what this is gonna do is a same similar thing to up here is it's just gonna automatically grab all of these elements in our list and assign them to X, Y, Z accordingly in our named tuple. So you can see if I print P to the screen now, and we give it a run. No errors, everything's working fine. X equals A, Y equals B, Z equals C.